we serve. He's a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. We serve. Amen. Amen. Heaven and earth are born here. Angels fall before him. What a mighty God we serve. He's a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we Amen, amen. Heaven and earth adore him. Angels fall before him. What a mighty God we serve. Father in heaven, we praise and worship you. We have such a holy name. We thank you for whom you are. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love towards us. We thank you for preserving our life to see this day. We ask, O oh God, that your name be glorified in all that concerns us in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come before your throne of grace this morning to worship and to learn of you, we ask, Father, that you send your spirit upon our lives, that as your word comes, they will find a dwelling place in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That no one will go out of this place today without being inspired by your word. And everyone that shall hear your word hereafter, that listen to this message hereafter, shall be blessed Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come and get the spirit of misunderstanding, misconception of the enemies. We ask, O oh God, that you fill our hearts with your spirit to receive your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Amen. and everyone shall say, Amen. Amen. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you so very much for finding time to worship with us in person this morning. This is the first Sunday of the ninth month of the year 2024. When I look back in the past months, I have every reason to be grateful to God for our lives. Not everybody that saw January 1st have seen September 1st. God has preserved your life. God has preserved my life for a purpose, and we want to give him praise. Yes. He has kept us to this time, and he that has started with us from the beginning, for sure by his grace will lead us through safely in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My prayer for you is that in this ninth month of the year, you will encounter God Amen. in a greater measure Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No one encounters God and remains the same. Moses encountered God. He became powerful, a powerful instrument in the hands of God. Saul encountered God. He became a powerful instrument in the hands of God. This month, I pray that you will encounter God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In this month, you of the year, our, our love for God will increase Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When your love for God increases, you begin to seek God in a greater dimension. Amen. You begin to feel satisfied in the presence of God, whether it is there is you, you have enough to eat, you have enough to wear, you'll be satisfied because the love of God will fill your heart. So this morning I pray that your love for God will increase. When God, your love for God increases, God's love will also increase for you. Yeah. In this ninth month of the year, our expectations shall not be cut off. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. our expectations shall not be cut off. Amen. In this nine month of the year, in this nine month of the year, the Lord will remember you. Amen. This is the month of September. People are afraid of the ember month, but I pray that this month will be the month that God will remember you. He will remember your affliction. When God remembered the affliction of the children of Israel, when they were in Egypt, he sent a deliverer. This month, the Lord will send a deliverer your way. The Lord will send a helper to you. Because this is the month of remembrance. The Lord will remember you for all the good things you have done. If you have not done any good thing, begin to do good things. Begin to think of good things to do. And the good things that you have done, the Lord will remember you. The Lord will remember you for his name's sake. Even if you have not
not done any good thing. The Lord will remember you for his name's sake. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He will remember you as an individual. Amen. He will remember your families. And he will remember us as a church. He will visit us with all our heart desires. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My question to you now is. What are your utmost heart desires? What do you desire? Bow down your heads. And tell God what you desire. Say ask. You shall receive sick, you shall find knock. The door shall be opened unto you. Ask what you want. What do you need God to give to you? He's here. He said, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in their midst. This is an opportunity for you to ask. I ask for the liberation of those in captivity in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask for open heart. For those that do not know you, that they shall come to know you. I pray for those that have been one that have asked me to pray for them. I pray, oh God, that we encounter you this month. Those preparing for marriages, those preparing for burial ceremony, those preparing for birthday, those preparing to go back to school. Lord, as our children go back to school this month, you will go with them. Father, you will go with them. They will not be influenced externally by evil spirits. As we go back to our place of work this month, O oh God, we shall be doubly blessed, we shall be favored. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, for a prayer answer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray and everyone shall say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, please be seated. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, again. Last week, or uh, two weeks ago, we started a teaching series on hindrances to prayers. Amen. Amen. We have done it for two weeks now, and this is our third week. So the title of the message again is Hindrances to Prayers, Part 3. Amen. Amen. And I want us to pay quick uh, pay attention to what are the things that can possibly hinder your prayers. In our first and second uh, series, we discover that God is ready and available to listen to us always. He said, come, let's reason together. What are your challenges? What are the problems? Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Yes, the invitation is open. It's open to everyone, no matter your age, no matter your status, no matter your strength, the Lord said, come, let's reason together. With this, and, and you don't need any appointment to meet with God. For you to meet with anybody, you need to send text messages to ask, can I come and see you? Can I will you be available? Can we talk? But in the case of God, we just come into his presence with boldness and confidence, and he's there to answer you. Amen. Amen. We also discover that one of the major hindrances to prayer is sin. What is sin? Any act of disobedience to the ways of God, to the laws of God, to the word of God is sin. Check your life. In what way are you disobeying God? Every act of disobedience. If you didn't know, it's a different issue. The Bible says at the time of ignorance, God overlooks that he has commanded every man everywhere to repent. At the time you didn't know, God overlooks. Now that you know, that every act of disobedience is sin against God, and sin is the only hindrance, is the only barrier between you and God. The, the, the door to, your, to the presence of God is shut by your sins. And I, will, I want to encourage you that if you are still living in sin, that today you can cry to God for answer, uh, to forgive you, and will forgive you. I want you to know that the first prayer that uh, of, a, of a sinner with God answers is the prayer of repentance. Today is the day of repentance. If you hear the word of God, harden not your heart. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The second hindrance to prayer, which we discussed last week, was unbelief and faithlessness. Unbelief and faithlessness. As powerful as Jesus was, the Bible says, See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. That he went about doing good, healing all who were sick, who were sick, and setting them free from possessions. 
But as good as Jesus was while on earth, as powerful as he was while he was on earth, he could not do many miracles in his community, in his village, because of their unbeliefs. Because they did not believe in him. So my dear friends, if you want God to answer your prayer, please believe his word. Have faith in him. He said if you ask, if you have faith, ask anything you will in my name, I will give to you. Praise the Lord. So if you want God to answer your prayers, have faith in him. If you didn't listen to, uh, if you're not here in the first two weeks, like the past two weeks, I didn't listen to this message. I want to encourage you to please go back to our YouTube channel and listen to the messages on hindrances to prayers, part one and part two. Even if you were here, it is highly recommended that you go back and listen to it because the Bible says faith comes by hearing the first time, hearing again the word of God. When you hear the first time, you may not fully understand, but by the time you hear it the second time, you will be able to understand. That is why Apostle Paul often said, it is not wrong for me to write the same thing to you again. Amen. Praise the Lord. So go back to the YouTube and uh, listen to it again. So the third hindrance to prayer, which we shall be discussing today, is lack of prayer and lack of persistent, persistency in prayers. Lack of prayers. If you don't pray at all, you have nothing to present before God. Amen? Are you with me? If you don't pray, God has nothing to listen to. If you spend time to pray, God will spend time to listen. So if you don't spend time to pray, God has nothing to listen to. Are we together? And when you pray, you are supposed to persist. Keep asking. Keep asking. Push. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Amen. P, pray. U, un, until. S, something. H, happens. Push. You continue to pray until your request Amen. So these are the things we are going to discuss today. Lack of prayer and lack of persistency. Some people will ask, oh, I've been asking. I've not received. Or some people don't even pray because they feel there is no need for it. But today, I want to let you know there is need for prayer. Everybody needs help. Individuals need help. Organizations need help. Families need help. Whoever ignores prayer is ignoring help. Amen. You should not be discouraged from praying. Do not allow anything to break communication between you and God. Prayer is communication between you and God. Maybe you are angry at somebody, you are angry at something, you are angry with the government, and you, you refuse to pray. Then you are shutting yourself out of the presence of God. Amen. Let's look quickly at Luke chapter 18 verses 1 to 7. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 7. If I read from the English Standard Version, the Bible says that, And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Amen. Who is the he there? Jesus was the one that told his people, his apostles and his congregation, a parable to the effect that men ought always to pray and not lose heart. King James Passion said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, prayer should be always. Even when you are sad, pray. When you are happy, pray. When you have enough, pray. When you don't have enough, pray. That is what the Bible says, pray always. Men ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, maybe Toronto, New Market, Mount Zion, wherever you come from, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected men. There was this judge, maybe the mayor, the prime minister, your supervisor in the office, your parents, your husband, your wife, said this man neither feared God 
no respected man. He was a judge. But there was a certain widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. There was a certain widow, a helpless widow, a poor widow, who kept going to this wicked judge who had no regard for God, no respect for men. She kept going. She did not stop until she got what she wanted. She did not lose her. She did not allow her condition, her situation to prevent her from making her request. So your situation that you are poor, that you are a widow, you are a widower, you are a student, you are a husband, whatever situation you may be, should not prevent you from going to God. Not even sin should prevent you from going to God. The mistake Adam made was when he sinned, he started running from God. If he had run to God in total repentance, probably would not have been in the mess we are today. Some years ago, I worked in an office after, just after my high school, uh, in my early 20s. And uh, there was this man who was really, really a corrupt man. He was a womanizer. And one day we were talking, he said, oh, if Adam had not, Adam and Eve had not eaten that fruit, we would have been enjoying today. And I said, sir, assuming Adam and Eve had not eaten their fruit, are you sure you would not have eaten it? Praise the Lord. Let's not blame others for anything that is happening to us. Let us not blame Adam and Eve for whatever they did. There is salvation now through Jesus Christ. If you miss it, it is because you did not believe. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this woman did not stop. For a while, he refused. The Bible said for some time, this wicked judge refused to listen to the woman. But after he said to himself, Though I never fear God, nor respect man. Amen. Though I never fear God, nor respect man. By the time you keep praying, keep asking, God will listen to you. By the time you keep making your request, your prayers will be answered. He said to himself, this time that he said to himself, he remembered the woman. Amen. The Bible said, God remembered the children of Israel in Egypt. So there's a specific time set for your prayer to be answered. But if you give up, you may never get the answer. If the woman gave up after the first, second, and third attempt, it's possible, I and mean, she wouldn't have gotten her answer. But because she kept going to this judge, give me my, uh, my, my, grant my request, the judge granted her her request. I learned from this scripture. Again, as a young graduate, I was working in an establishment where I was supposed to be supplied water at least once a month i went to the officer in charge sir i need water he said i'll give you i discovered he was playing on my intelligence he was not ready to give it because i was young and uh, i was not influential so i made up my mind that every morning i would go to his office and say sir i have not got you my water i kept doing it after some time he got but he said what is your problem do you want to insult me? I said, I'm not insulting you. He said, my junior brother, I trained is bigger than you. I said, yes, I will grow. Praise the Lord. Years after, I got promoted higher than himself. Maybe about 10 years after. I got promoted and I got to a rank that was higher than himself. One day he looked at me and said, ah, this small boy, you have grown up. I said, yes, I told you. I said, when he called me a small boy, nobody, 10 years before, I told him I will grow. Amen. Persistency. And of course, he did give me, he gave me water after I kept persisting and bothering him. Bother God. Don't be too gentle to bother God. Go to him. Father, I need this. Father, I need this. Father, I need this. Until he does this, don't give him rest. And the scripture says, give, say, say, take no rest and give me no rest. Amen. It's in the scripture, take no rest and give me no rest until I establish Jerusalem and make it a place of peace on earth. And by that, God was saying, Keep praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 6. Verse 5. Yet because, verse five, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice. 
so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. That's what a wicked man said. God is not wicked. Amen? God will not delay until you are worn out. He will wait to an appointed time, testing your patience. A preacher said, if you ask today and God gives to you, God just wanted to encourage you. If you ask today and he does not give you, he's training you in patience. If you ask and he does not give you at all, he has something better for you. Do you understand? If you ask today, he gives to you, he's encouraging your faith. If you ask today, he does not give to you, he's training you in patience to learn how to persist. And if you ask, he does not give to you at all, he has something better for you in store. Amen. Learn these three principles. Keep asking. Keep trusting. Keep going. Don't stop until you get what you want. In verse 6, And the Lord Jesus said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. Amen. He compared himself, God, to the unrighteous judge. Verse 7. And will not God, Amen, will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Amen. So people say, I woke, I woke up late, so I, 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 I forgot to pray. I was rushing for an appointment. No. I got so tired at night, I could not pray. No. I got so busy the day, I forgot to pray. No. You see, will God not give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Amen. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Good question. Amen. One of the songs we sang this morning talked about when the trumpet shall sound in holy adoration. Then we shall stand before the throne of God and say it is well with my soul. When the trumpet shall sound, will you be ready? I want you to know that Jesus is coming again. If I have no other message to preach, I will keep preaching that Jesus is coming again. Amen. If I have no other message to preach, I will keep preaching faith so that your, your foundation in the word of God will be deep. When the trumpet shall sound, will you be ready? When Jesus shall come, will he find faith on earth? Let nothing discourage you. Amen. Lack of prayer is lack of result. If you want to get results, Keep praying. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 6 to 18. The Bible says, Rejoice always. Amen. Pray without ceasing. You know, Jesus said, When God withhold justice from his servant, from his elect, who cried to him day and night, and in this scripture he said, Pray without ceasing. So, remove it. Don't only pray in the day and in the, in the, in the early in the morning or in the night. Pray always. Amen. Pray always. If you have nothing to ask for, give thanks. Amen. Rejoice always. Be happy. Be happy. No matter your situation, no matter your condition, no matter the challenges you have, be happy. Rejoice always. Pray always. Give thanks in all circumstances. In all situations, give thanks. You have food, give thanks. You don't have food, give thanks. You have more than enough, give thanks. Amen. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. A lot of people are asking for the will of God. Let me tell you what the will of God is. Amen. From this scripture, the will of God is for you to rejoice always, which means God wants you to be happy. The will of God is for you to come before God always. Amen. In all situations, that is the will of God. For you to have communion, relationship with God is the will of God. A lot of people don't go to God until they are ready to marry. 
for God, which, which, which girl should I marry? Which man should I marry? That is when they go to God. And because they don't have that relationship with God, they don't even recognize or hear, know how the voice of God sounds. Amen. So it is always that you should go to God. Whether you want to cook a, 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 a dish, a dish, uh, a, a soup or a meal you have been cooking before, go to God. There's room for improvement. Amen. Go to God always. Amen. We're talking about lack of prayer is one of the reasons prayers are not answered. So if you want your prayer to be answered, you need to pray. Amen. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. The word of God says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Amen. God wants you to be happy. I want to say that again. God wants you to be happy. He knows what you need that will make you happy. Your happiness should not be dependent on what you have that money can purchase. Your happiness should be dependent on what money cannot purchase, which is life, which is salvation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Praise the Lord. I want everybody to live here today happy. Happy because God wants you happy. Happy because your expectations shall not be cut off. Happy because God is interested and he will visit you in this month of remembrance. The month of September. Amen. Let your resemblance be made known to one another. Amen. This part of that verse, I said, the Lord is at hand. Amen. I want to re-emphasize that the second coming of Christ is at hand. I want to say again, the answer to your prayer is at hand. Because you are going to keep praying today, learn to pray the more as you await the second coming of Christ. Do not be anxious about anything. Worry, worry. Worry has never helped us, help anybody or save any situation. Amen. Do not be worried about anything. You are, you are not permitted to be anxious. What am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to wear? Where are we going to? How would my future end? No. Amen. It's a song that says, Leave me for God. Don't worry yourself. Leave me for God. Don't cry no more. He understands what you are passing through today. Let him defend his name. Let God defend his name. Amen. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayers and supplication, we ask him, let your request be made known to God. If you are balancing an equation, or you are performing an experiment, and you are supposed to mix a portion of one chemical or one element to another, to another and you do not put sufficient of each of the elements, will you get your desired results? No. Amen. If you are making soup and you not put sufficient ingredient to uh, salt to match the quantity of the soup, your soup will not be good. So these are the ingredients of prayer. I want to bring it out from this scripture. The ingredients of prayer is one, don't be anxious. As you are going to God, don't be anxious. Make your request with thanksgiving in your heart. Ingredients for prayer to be answered is remove anxiety, don't give God time, and then give him thanks. If you have sufficient quantity of thanks and sufficient and zero quantity of anxiety, then your prayer will be answered. Am I right? Am I speaking correctly? Zero anxiety plus your request Plus thanksgiving equals answer prayer. I think that equation is balanced. Anxiety is zero. 
your request. Four, five things you are requesting for. Thanksgiving for what he has done before, for what he will do, and even for the ones he will not do. Then you get result. If you try this and you don't get result, challenge God. Lord, you said that we do this. Then he will speak to you. Amen. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. By the time you add zero quantity of anxiety, plus your supplications and thanksgiving, you get result. The first result you get, whether you already have the substance, is that you have peace of mind. Amen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You have not seen it, but because you have had zero anxiety, plus five prayer points, plus seven thanksgiving, equals your answer prayer, and the first assurance that your prayer is answered, you have peace of mind. And then, with the peace of mind, it, the peace of mind will overcome every of the consequences of the problems, then God will begin to guide your heart towards Christ Jesus. Are we together? Praise the Lord. Amen. Remember the topic, subtopic is lack of prayer and lack of persistency. You need to persist. Again, push. Pray until something happens. Persist. Be like that woman who kept going to the church and you're going to the unrighteous God, judge and God said, listen to what the unrighteous judge said. If God, if the unrighteous judge can do this, how much more will I, the holy and righteous God, give you what you ask? Let's turn our scriptures to Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28. Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Amen. A, a, a music writer said, if you have time to pray, God will have time to listen. Amen. Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to a district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me. A Canaanite woman in this place is lacking to a sinner. He was not of the Jewish race, was not of the Israeli race. He was a Canaanite woman. But she cried to God and asked for mercy. Amen. I was listening to one of my favorite speakers, preacher recently, Brother Billy Akani, and he said, You need to ask for God's mercy. Even if God had promised you something, prophetically or anyhow, He has assured you we do it. Yes, His word will not return to Him void and it accomplished the purpose of which you are sent, but you need to ask for God's mercy. When God's mercy acts on your request, you will be remembered. Are we together? When God's mercy lands on your prayer request, you will be remembered. That was why God said, I have heard the cry of my people in Egypt, in the place of bondage. Moses, go set them free. Hallelujah. Behold, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by demon, by a demon. Amen. But he did not answer her a word. Praise the Lord. He did not answer her a word. All scriptures are written for our correction. They are inspired by God and they are written for our correction, for examples for us to follow. Praise the Lord. He did not answer her a word. And the disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away. Praise the Lord. She was crying, Have mercy on me, have mercy on me. Jesus ignored her. It's possible Christ has ignored you. God may have ignored you for a purpose. He wants you to learn to persist. People might be laughing at you. You have been taking this prayer point for long. You have done this, you have done that. Why is your prayer not answered? Just as the disciples of Christ came to Jesus, send her away. Amen. Don't allow what people say 
distracts you from praying. Are we together? The woman did not allow this to distract her. The disciples said, send her away. She's crying after us. Jesus answered and said, listen to what Jesus said to the woman. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Praise the Lord. I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and left before him, saying, Lord, help me. You may think you are not qualified or holy enough to pray, but keep praying. The woman did not allow that to distract her. She did not allow any person to discourage her. She did not allow her situation. She just wanted the salvation and deliverance of her daughter. She said, help me. And he answered, Look at what Jesus said to this woman again, verse 26. And he answered, Is it right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs? Are you with me? Brethren, ask me, is it right for me to take honest food and give it to the dogs? No, it's not right. Amen. And listen to this woman who knew how to persist, who knew how to pray. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat from the crops that fall from the master's table. Amen. Don't feel insulted. Jesus called this woman a dog by implication. The woman did not consider it insulting. She said, yes, I know. You cannot take the sauce, your son's uh, food and give to dogs. But when a crumb falls from the master's table, the dogs are free to eat. I may not be an Israelite by then, but as a Canaanite woman, I have come to you for repentance. I have come to you. You can answer me from what is left over from the master's table. Persistency. Persistency. The first woman we saw persisted and the judge answered. This woman persisted. What did Jesus do? What did he say? Then Jesus answered her. Oh woman, great is your faith. Amen. I want to get to that situation where Christ is said to me, boy, great is your faith. I don't want to put myself in a situation where Jesus will ask me, where is your faith? Did you not say you are a Christian? Amen. I want to get to that be in that situation. After I prayed and prayed and prayed, Jesus said, Wow, this is what I expected of you. Great is your faith. When the, when the disciples woke him up from the sleep while they were traveling on the boat, the disciples said, Do you not care that we perish? Jesus said, Hey. Oh, ye men of little faith, how long am I supposed to be with you? Amen. Praise the Lord. He got up and rebuked the wind. So when they brought the, 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 the man brought his son to his disciples, the disciples could not cast out the demons. The, the man brought the, the demon possessed child to Jesus. And Jesus said to his disciples, Oh, men of little faith, how long am I to be with you? Bring the child to me. But in the case of this woman, a Canaanite woman who was not an Israelite, who was not even a believer, Jesus, when she displayed faith by persistency, Jesus said, Great is your faith. Be it done to you as you desire. Amen. If there's somebody to pray, there's a God to listen. I'm waiting for you to pray. I'm encouraging you to pray. I'm advising you to pray. In every situation, pray. Hallelujah. And her daughter was healed instantly. If you persist to pray without being discouraged, your, pre your proble problems will be solved. Praise the Lord. Just want to share some few things with you and we'll draw the curtain for today and spend some time to pray so that we will know those that are willing to pray. Amen. There are two F's. Letter F. There are two F's that could happen if you don't pray. Amen. There are two words starting with F. 
You know, F stands for failure, right? F. Well, well, if you have F in your grade, you know it's not good, right? Praise the Lord. There are two Fs that could happen if you don't pray. One, you will faint. Amen? You know what it is to faint? Praise the Lord. If you don't want to faint, you should pray. Praise the Lord. If you don't want to faint, you should pray. Luke chapter 1, verse 18. We read it before. Amen. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. See, if you are fainting in faith, you are fainting in every situation, it's because prayer is lacking in your life. Amen. Amen. Another thing, if you go to Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, reading from the King James Version, Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the Bible says, those who do wickedly against the covenant shall he shall corrupt fatally those who do wickedly. Don't be wicked. Don't do wicked things. Don't practice wickedness. It will not pay. If you are wicked, the Lord will blot you out. Amen. But look at the second part of that scripture. But they that know their God. Amen. They that know their Do you know your God? Do you know you go to the extent to believe and accept that he's ready to answer your prayers? Do you know that your God is dependable? That he's ready to help mercy on you and to help you? Do you know your God? The Bible says, they that know their God shall be what? Strong. Amen. So if you don't want to fight and you want to be strong, you need to know your God and you need to pray. They that know that God shall be strong and do what? Great exploit. What does it to make do exploit? To discover what others have not discovered. To enjoy what others are not enjoying. To be greatly successful. Those that know that God shall be strong and do great exploit. And what can make you strong is prayer. Because prayerless person. We faint. Because men ought always to pray and not to faint. If you are fainting, it means you are not strong. If you are strong, it means it is prayer that make you make you strong. Amen. You will fall if you don't pray. The second thing is you will fall if you don't pray. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Matthew 26, 41. It said, Watch and pray. So that you do not fall into temptation. Amen. Watch and pray. So the second F is fall. If you don't want to fall into sin, if you don't want to fall into temptation, please pray. Watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. It is the flesh that leads us to sin. Desires of the flesh. The loss of the eyes. The pride of life. These are what leads us to sin. By the way, we are continuing with our Bible studies titled Trials and Temptation, Useful Tools for Believers' Growth. Amen. I encourage you to join our Bible studies, listen to them on YouTube, and you will find these tools that I, God has put in place for your spiritual growth. Praise the Lord. Watch and pray so that you don't fall into temptation. The devil is not, going to, is not going to write a note to you to say, I'm coming to tempt you tomorrow. It just comes like that. And you see that it is robbing you of the peace of God, of the mind of God, the presence of God. It's called temptation. Temptation is both positive and negative. If you fall into it, you sin. If you pass it, you grow. So if you don't want to fall, you watch and pray. There's another word I phrase, it's not in the scripture, but I learned it from my, one of my supervisors in the office years ago. He said, prayerful preparation prevents poor performance. How many P's? One, two, three, four, five. Prayerful preparation prevents poor performance. Praise the Lord. Today is the first week of September and our children will be going back to school this week and we're going to take time to pray for our students. Our children are going back to school so that God will give them 
all that it requires. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Remember, if you don't pray, you will not get results. Remember that you have to persist in prayers. Remember that if you don't pray, you will faint. Remember that if you don't pray, you will fall. And you don't want to faint, you don't want to fall. You want to be strong. This is the time to pray. Pray for yourself. Say, ask you shall receive. Seek you shall find. Knock, the door shall be opened unto you. Remember that, that what I told you, I gave an equation this morning. Zero anxiety. Zero worries plus your request plus task given equals answer prayers. So make sure you are not worried. Oh, the cost of gas is going up. It doesn't bother you. God will supply. Food is expensive. Okay. Things are not working well. Okay. Zero anxiety plus your request. What do you need? These are the things you are talking about now. Begin to pour out your heart intentions to God. Spend time to pray. Begin to pour them out to God. This is what I need. Lord, this is what I want. This is how I want things to go. And then after you begin to thank God, begin to thank Him. Then the peace of God. If there is no peace in your heart, please don't stop praying. Because we have regulated time to be in service, we might end the service, but don't stop praying about the situation until you find the peace of God in your heart, even when you get home. But I want you to pray now. God help me. The woman said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Help me. Mercy is something we need to ask for. Father, have mercy on me. Father, have mercy on me. Help me not to fall into sin. Help me, Lord, that I will be ready when you come. Help me, Lord. Zero anxiety. If you want your prayer to answer, zero your mind. Leave it for God. Stop crying. He understands what you are passing through. Zero anxiety. If there is zero anxiety in your heart, then begin to make your request known. Lord, I want to know you the more. I am Lord, Lord. I want to know more of you. Sanctify my heart, O oh God. Let there be no place for sin, for anger, for hatred, for fear and worries in my heart. I know, Lord, that if I can zero anxiety, if I can zero anxiety, ah, the peace of God must come. Father, all that the enemies have presented to me, I present to you. All the challenges, I present to you. My career, your own ministry in my hands, my wife and children, the flock and the sheep you have put in my hands. You said to Peter, feed my sheep, feed my flock. The sick man in my congregation, the sick woman in my congregation, I bring before you. The helpless man in my family, the helpless woman in my family and congregation, I bring before you. I bring before you those that are facing persecution in this country and other parts of the world on account of their faith, I bring before you. Have your will, Lord. We read that a prophet came and said to Paul, the owner of this ghetto will be arrested and jailed in Jerusalem. And when they could not pers uh, persuade Paul, they prayed and said, Father, let your will be done. Lord, in all our requests, let your will be done. Father, in the request that every man, every woman under the auction of my voice is presenting today, let your will be done. This is my prayer for them, O God. 
This is my prayer for the church. This is my prayer for the brethren. This is the prayer, my prayer for everywhere that I, that I ask you to pray for them. Let your will be done. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Grant us peace of mind and body as you direct us to Christ, our helper, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my and ever living God. For a prayer answer, for in Jesus' name we pray, and everyone shall say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Like I told you, because we have limited time, we're going to end the prayer here. But please, when you go back to your homes, continue to pray until you get peace. Zero anxiety, plus your prayer request, plus thanksgiving, your results will be at hand. Let us sing our congregational song. Our congregational song is what a friend we have in Jesus. Can you project it, sir? What a friend we have in Jesus. Shall we stand up let's sing our congregation last song? Amen. Amen. Let's sing it. One, two, sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, blessings and dreams together. What a privilege to come with and bring to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we offer for our feet. Oh, what needless things we get. All because we do not come and God in prayer. How we try as a temptation is there trouble everywhere. We should never be discouraged. Take keep to the Lord in prayer. Can we find our friends so faith? Sorrow share. Jesus knows our every weakness. We keep to the Lord in prayers. Are we faced with trials and temptation? Are you carrying your bodies alone? What a great, a great privilege to talk to Jesus who cares about us. He's a great friend. Thank you, Father. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, the praise, all the adoration because you have answered our prayers. I declare and declare, God, that this month of September shall be a month of greater encounter with you. It shall be a month of remembrance. It shall be a month, O God, of visitation. That you will visit us and remember us and answer our prayers. Amen. Grant us peace Amen. and unity of your kingdom. Where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be in your front to lead you, Amen. behind you Amen. to guide you. Decide to keep your company inside you to speak to you and above you to bless you the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and everyone shall say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus and thank you so very much for worshiping with us this morning. We look forward to seeing you same time next week. Remember to invite your family members and friends to our worship and please join us for Bible studies. At the end of the service, Let's make a replacement for coffee. God bless you. I love you all.